Thank you. So I'm using CocoTB since 10 years now. I think I was involved since very beginning of this project. Then it stopped. But I did my PhD also using CocoTB. Then I'm not using CocoTB anymore. But still coming back to, to this topic, I think it's extremely interesting. And I have these thoughts at the end of my PhD that maybe we need a new verification methodology, why we need that, what is so cool about it, I will try to say. This will be very theoretical presentation compared to previous ones, so apologies for that. So what I'm going to speak about is, yeah, CocoTV make the verification fun again. I think that was the presentation from someone who used this this sentence and I, I think it captures well what is CocoTB about. Then I'm going to quickly describe what is System Verilog and UVM and what are the possible future for these tools and why it's not so good. What are the limitations of CocoTB? Because of course we have limitations and uh, we have to speak about it. What is a PyTest flow? For me, it's a game changer in CocoTB. It was introduced quite some time ago. I think now it's official part of CocoTB. PyUVM, which is quite new thing, which is really cool. And, but we can ask question, can, can we do more than PyUVM? And I will show some cool examples. And I can tell you some, there are some real examples where CocoTB is used in silicon proven projects and really big ones. Just one slight introduction to CocoTB. What is it? It is framework around the verification that keeps the simulator just simulating. So it's not doing anything more than that. You just connect to simulator using VPI. All this layer is abstracted to you by CocoTB. So that means all your test logic and all your test infrastructure is written purely in Python and you just don't care what is behind you. You just, you just access your signals, you just access your registers using the Python. And so you can do everything, all the test bench elements using only the Python. A little about the evolution. So gradually CocoTB started inheriting some concepts from, from big verifications. So for example, we have already protocol agents, I think AHI, AHB, Wishbone. There are number of extensions. There is extension for randomization and coverage. I think now even we have more extensions for coverage, not only one framework. But that one which I prepared is was targeting smooth transition for system Verilog users, so provided the same capabilities than system Verilog coverage and randomization. A new thing is PyUVM, which is quite accurate UVM implementation, but instead of done in system Verilog, it, it's done in Python. And this table is very interesting because you can see maybe these numbers, you don't know exactly what they mean because they may be they may depend on some continuous integration flows, but, but you can see like 25% of CocoTB is using CocoTB coverage, and 10% of CocoTB is using, for example, AXI agent. That is very high yield, in my opinion. And PyUVM is also ramping up really well. Okay, a little about the EDA. Yeah, so I will try to explain. It is not easy to explain the mindset of how EDA works, what I believe is true, and over the last 20 years, I think it is. So evolution of system very lock and UVM is very slow compared to any software ecosystem, right? So we have only three system very lock updates in the last 15 years. These updates are very small, like, Cover group inheritance is one of the new things introduced in Verilog 2023. I, I'm not sure if how useful is that. In the same time, we have 10 new releases of Python. If any one of you is using Python, then you know exactly that it's changed dramatically between 3.2 and 3.12. And CocoTB, after some period, some quiet period, which I remember very well, um, 
it's now ramping up really, really good. And we are seeing Kokoti B2.0 approaching and that will be a game changer in my opinion. But at the same time, the demands are rising and how they are targeted? They are targeted by more fancy software. So we have like test running automation tools, we have metrics analysis tool, we have now recently requirement tracking tools, which probably you don't know what it is about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there is more and more software that has to be built around the system Verilog and UVM environment because that's clear that this mechanism itself, it's not enough to provide you good quality of verification. And we, we, we can summarize it. <laughs> Slow evolution of EDA is good business for EDA because more advanced tools are needed to meet the requirements of more advanced verifications and, and that's their business, right? So you cannot do something using UVM and system Verilog, but we have tools for you for that, which you have to pay, of course. One slide about UVM. So I think what is most important about UVM that it's very static in terms of how your tests are developed. I, I don't know how many of you know UVM, but we have so-called phases in UVM. Then phases tell exactly how your test case looks like. It is very static. Your structure must be well-defined. Coverage is also static. You cannot do any anything regarding coverage. This is just limitation of the language syntax. There is lack of upper layer, test running logic. Yeah, you, UVM only tells you how to, how, to, how to implement your test case. It doesn't tell you how to run the test. And there are tools for that, of course, but uh, then you have to learn the tool. And the syntax is nightmare. I, I think it has been said so many times, I don't have to say it again. But what we have instead, we have high performance because test ventures are connected very close to the simulator engine. We have advanced debug tools. Of course, this is all provided by the simulator. And this is crazy widely adopted, right? So almost all industries using UVM plus system very log for verification. This is probably the most important slide of the whole presentation. I wanted to show you the SVUVM stack compared to CocoTB stack. Of course, it's not as beautiful at the moment, but we are very close to that. So yes, at the bottom you have simulator. For CocoTB you can use any simulator. You can very easily switch from one simulator to another. You can even switch between open source simulator to your commercial simulator. Above you have your HDL. We cannot do anything with that. And above the differences start. So your test bench you develop in SVUVM in CocoTB, you do it in Python. Your reference model, you usually do in MATLAB C or you use proprietary verification IP, which is compiled code. You don't even know the technology. In CocoTB, it's again Python. Then you need some scripts to run your tests. In CocoTB, you can do it in Python. Then you need some test runner, which in EDA, that will be special application to do that. In CocoTB, it's Python. Your metrics analyzer, again, you need special tool for that. In CocoTB, it's another Python framework. And I had to put AI somewhere in my presentation, so I thought it's, it's a good place. So EDI companies are speaking about uh, some AI verification, how to make it smarter. But for Python, it's again just import AI, right? And that's it. CocoTB. Low performance, it's the, the biggest concern for CocoTB, so simulation is much longer. There are some technical limitations of this architecture that we cannot resolve. There are concerns for scalability, which I hear very often. So if CocoTB works well with small IPs, is it going to work well with big design? And that's what surprised me recently. There is software mindset around Python users and I was told that maybe software mindset is not something what you should look for, for for hardware verification. But on the other hand, the test bench bring up is very fast. You are free 
in your simulator choice and Python is of course much more fun than system Verilog. <laughs> yeah, so now about some methodological aspects. So smarter tools versus smarter methodology. So again, system Verilog UVM, very static approach. Test is solid defined. Your test is very well defined. Where are the boundaries? What is your test object? In Python, you don't have this limitation. You can do dynamic testing, which has huge opportunities. In system Verilog UVM, you need runner layer. And there is no like language level connection between this runner layer and, and your test. And in Python, it's, there is no such limitation because your runner layer is also in Python. In system Verilog, smart testing, that would require another even layer in your, in your software chain. But in Python, again, it is possible to do full interaction between some, something you may call your smart layer and, and your test logic. So what would be the way towards new verification methodology? What I believe is the right choice. So static elements, which we use for now, they can be reused. There is no concern to, to use the same. But the dynamic objects should be redefined, like coverage objects, test objects, test runner objects, and stimuli generation. That should be handled in a different way, in more dynamic way when you actually have, you can do much more things with that. And that's all possible with Python. And now I will go to some examples. So this first one is very simple. I think I did it, I presented it in my PhD. So you just need CocoTB and CocoTB coverage framework. And your example is highly randomized test case. But if you just repeat the runs, you're not getting coverage closer fast. But what you can do is something called coverage directed test generation. So given the coverage you achieved already, you adjust your constraints. And in CocoTB, you can just use it using two lines of code. That's absolutely not possible in system very low of UVM without having any upper layer that, that runs the test. But, but still, it will be much more complicated overall. And coverage objects are shared with randomization mechanism. Again, because it's Python, it's, it's just the language object, right? And in system very lock like cover group object is totally independent from your data generation. And coverage goals were met 10 times faster in this particular example. This is another example, it's about checkpointing. I, I think some simplified example is, is published somewhere in the GitHub. So that is where all test cases share some common phases. We have initialization phase, which is very long, but we don't need to randomize it too much. Then we have enumeration phase, which is uh, shorter, but it has more possibilities. And there's transmission phase where we actually need the real randomization. So there is something like an even distribution of required randomization depending, depending on the test phase. And there, that's how checkpointing works really well because you can checkpoint your simulation after initialization and you can use it as a seed for the next test. So the next test would be really taking the checkpoint which you already did. So that makes the simulation much faster. So we have like two layers of randomization in this example, like scenario level randomization, which, which manages the checkpointing and the sequence level randomization, which is regular one, right? So randomizing the data and test sequences. Yeah, this is the most complicated example and the most successful project. So Thomas helped a lot. I think we worked on it, oh my God, seven years ago? No. But this is really cool. Now you don't need CocoTB test framework. CocoTB test is now part of CocoTB, but you need PyTest, PyTest, XTest, and some optimization engine. So how it works, you have 
your DUT, which is which was a DSP block with a lot of parameters, and you, you know if you have a lot of parameters, then number of possible combinations is like thousands. And what we need to find is optimal DUT configuration. I don't want to put the details, but you can optimize versus some PPA. You can optimize versus your DSP performance, DSP quality, and that's what we had to do. And test case was very, very simple for us. It's just to process some simple stimuli and calculate the metrics. So it's a very simple test. But what was the challenge? Challenge was that we have to run thousands of tests to do the proper optimization, right? So we have the test runner, which is Python. We have the test, which is Python. And we have optimization engine, which is Python from SciPy Optimize. And we used Icarus Verilog and using the PyTest exist, we could run like thousands of simulation in parallel. So we could really finish the optimization task using this approach. Another example is uh, coverification with reference model. It's pretty simple, but usually what you do in, in your UVM is that reference model is part of your test range. Instead, we can do like this. So, so your DUT is you just choice if you you just choose if your DUT is in HDL or, or if your DUT is in Python, and that means you have exactly the same test suite working on, uh, on on your reference model and on your actual HDL, and that's very powerful because you don't need to write additional tests for your reference model. Yeah, so a little summary. So PyTest flow enables new test intelligence layer above CocoTB. So this is a game changer in my opinion. We don't need to reinvent the wheel number of test frameworks we have available already. I, I'm not expert in that. I'm not expert in Python. Actually, I work as architects now, so I only do Word and Excel. UVM cannot be fully reused due, due to its architectural limitations. So that's why I believe we think new verification methodology. And the question, are we ready? And this is open question. I think we need mature enough CocoTB to start working on the new methodology. And that's it, thank you. <laughs> So some of these examples. So, so, sorry, Mark. One qu the question was: Do you have a concrete example for example number one here? Uh, number one was about coverage-driven test generation, right? Yeah. Now I don't remember, but I think uh, it should be published, or, or I can implement it to you in five minutes. <laughs> Thumbs up from Matt. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, the, sorry, the, sorry, sorry, Mike. Would, do you want to repeat the question? Or? Yeah, the question was about the performance of, of Python, and uh, I think it's not the performance is slow because of Python. The performance is slow because of how Python connects to the simulator. And that's not the question to me. That should be a question to CocoTB. Ca what can we do with that? But I believe it's not a concern. Even if simulation is much slower, you spend much less time on it and you can parallelize it, right? You can make your test bench smarter so you don't have to run such a long simulation. So here is the advance. Yeah, I highly doubt that the Python interpreter and the VPI interface is the bottleneck in RTL sims. Um, yeah, I agree But I, I would love to hear from CocoTV people, can we do something with that or not? Michael. I, I had a question about the, the architecture. In your presentation, you said that one of the big advantages of using Python all the way through the stack is that you're in this one domain the whole time. But CocoTB runs inside the simulator process, right? And then your runner is another process. Not really. CocoTB connects to simulator. So CocoTB has this layer of uh, libraries that actually connects to simulator. So simulator is, is not aware of the upper layers. 
So all the upper layers are actually written in Python. Simulator is not aware of that. Simulator is just doing dummy simulation. But you can only call VPI from inside that process, yep. right? Yep. Oh, but you've got some IPC between Cocoa TV and that process or something. Mm, yes, you have the layer between them, but uh, not sure what you're asking. You're asking between this runner layer? And yes, you're, so it's a runner layer in the same process? I mean, can you... No, So then it, it's it not, doesn't have to. But then it's not then you haven't got full access to the test from inside you the can. run. You can do that. I it's don't know. Not do you, do you have a diagram or something? I don't uh, yeah, I don't think so. But uh, I, you can do that. We did that, right, Thomas? Yeah. It's the same process? No, it's not the same process, but it's, it's a communication. Uh, exactly. That yeah, sure, you can communicate. But you could communicate to UVM, I mean. Yes, but uh, you need tools to do that, right? Okay. <laughs> you need tools to do that with Python as well, right? Well, it's, if it's just import, then... Yes. Oh, yeah. it's time. <coughs> so how easy is it to integrate CocoaDB with something like Python's hypothesis so that you get automated uh, shrinking of counterexamples? Uh, with hypothesis, I didn't do that. I think... Uh, I think we tried, but I don't remember what was the biggest problem. But with PyTest, I think now it is done by default, right? So it also does shrinking, so you don't get like, ah, oh, it fails after 500 cycles. You figure it out how to reduce it to five. Mm, that, that depends how you write your test. If you write <laughs> your test that way, so you cannot resolve that problem, right? A final question from me, Marek. Um, do you have any like good news stories about introducing Cocoa TV, like folks who might have used System Verilog and UVM in the past who then get exposed to Python and Cocoa TV and, you know, do they end up liking it or is it just like another way of doing it or what, what's it been like in your experience? I think big concern is performance, unfortunately. Of course, everyone is happy with Python that, that things can be done much faster, but performance is a concern and I, I think that's, that's the biggest one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Marek. Thank you, Steve.